Him to Fourth Avenue by Eli Siegel. Ah, all the books waiting for you in the crowded bookshops of Fourth Avenue. My name is Marvin Mondlin. I am the estate book buyer for Strand. The first job, in fact, that I had in book selling was when it was, the Strand was a small shop on 4th Avenue, one of about 25 or 30 shops that lined the avenue then. That was back in 1951. Weiser's, which is where you often started if you began walking down from 14th Street, their stands were outside, they were wonderful. Schulte's was a bit of everything. They had a few floors, they were a very big store. Then you walk further on down, and the Eleanor Lowenstein, the corner bookshop, it was not on the corner. There was a friendly bookstore, which was not run by a person not so friendly. The Strand is the last of the original Fourth Avenue bookstores. I remember one of those stores right off 4th Avenue. It was late 70s. It was one of the last ones. Maybe that made them even meaner, because they were mean. It was a family, and they hated each other more than they hated the customers. And you know, that's <laughs> saying a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. And they had this big cousin who used to, you know, just throw people out whenever he felt like it. He wouldn't give an explanation. You out. He <laughs> said, but why? I didn't do anything. Out. Sometimes they would just say no. They would say, how much is this? No. They seemed to me to be very annoyed you know, if you interrupted their reading. They were always reading, they were hunched over. They basically hated you, they didn't want you there. They acted more like you broke into their house. You know, it wasn't just that they owned the books, it was their bookstore. It was more as if you had come in through the window and broken right into their house um, and were stealing their books. Well, what happened to Fourth Avenue, essentially, was that it was run by a lot of very interesting, strong, self-centered individuals, including my dad, and very few of them imparted knowledge to the younger generation. The Strand has been seen as lots of narrow passageways. You have to squeeze through, and you look up and uh, down, and you're trying to find out what's what. The Strand has a map that describes where books are located and some people don't like it. Many people find it very attractive because they never know what they'll run into. In Barnes and Nobles, you can do just about anything with the books. I, I, I hate to think about what people actually do with those books in Barnes and Nobles. I assume that the reason Barnes and Nobles allows this kind of behavior that's really close to vandalism, <laughs> you know, is there's, because they believe there's no other way to get Americans into a bookstore. You know, you have to at least offer them the opportunity to be felonious. And it turns out that there are people who have like their regular weekly bridge game. They have it in Barnes and Nobles. Do the people who come and play bridge there every week, how many books do they buy? Do they buy any books? You know, if you go to like the one here on 6th Avenue and um, 18th Street or whatever, you know, it, it seems like to be swarming with like 22-year-olds desperately making an attempt to fall in love by the magazines. <laughs> now, is this the business they're in? The uh, sort of thing that goes on now at Barnes & Noble, where they give you service with a smile and have coffee and they have a, a place where you can buy sandwiches and sit down and read and all of that. Uh, old book row people would have just scorned the whole thing. They would say, what? <laughs> treat people to meals, uh, give them. We're not in that business. We're selling books here, and if people don't want old books, we don't want them here. As far as opening up a coffee shop, we're having a big dispute about it, but I think eventually along the line, there will be a coffee kiosk or something serving coffee here. My concept was to give the coffee away free, but charge for the donuts and the sandwiches and the other things but everybody's laughing at me and saying, that's not gonna be feasible. But we might try it. We compete. Of Barnes and Nobles and Borders and the rest of them were deep discount places. We gave as big a discount or bigger discounts. The Strand at, uh, at the moment is undergoing some big changes because an elevator is being put into the building from the basement to the third floor. 
We're hoping to make it a little more customer friendly. After all, the uh, floors are coming apart, the ceiling is coming down, and uh, the front entrance doesn't work, and it's freezing in here. Book selling begins with a care for things. There's great emotions that are to be found in books, and in bookstores, you can find things that can have a tre tremendous effect on your life. Come then and see what's in 4th Avenue. Ah, all the wealth that's old and all that's new. And what a page a book can do and do.